The purpose behind data visualization is to help see trends, outliers, and patterns in your data. One of the more ignored facets of data visualization and data discovery is that pattern recognition part. If you're interested in quickly seeing patterns that exist in your data, the heat map chart is a great tool to help. And visualization benefits aside, what better chart type to talk about during a brutal Canadian winter than a nice warm heat map chart? Oh, and I'm Jeff, and this is Off the Charts with Jeff. The best way to explain a heat map chart is to build one for you. Let's try out a simple one so you can see how it works in Dundas BI. Start by adding a heat map chart to your dashboard. To use this chart type, you need one measure and one dimension, but usually you'd have two. I've got some really nice energy usage data in the United States where we'd expect to see some kind of pattern because of weather. Hopefully, we can find something here. Let's start by dragging month into the rows dimension, and you can see that the visualization isn't immediately usable because we don't have enough data yet. Upon adding residential energy consumption to the measure, you can see this chart in action. Now to read this chart type, you want to look at this as time is slowing from top to bottom, and the intensity of the color will help you see the patterns of the values. We can see that there is a clear pattern repeating in the summer, as the darker colors indicating a greater amount of energy usage. But it's a bit awkward to see if these all appear at the same time. So let's go and split this chart up so that we can see all of our months side by side. To do this, let's add year as a second dimension and change the date that we're displaying instead of the full month to just the month name so that we're in alignment. Now it's clear that July is our highest month of energy consumption and November and April are a bit lighter, probably because less heating and air conditions requiring during those months in the United States. By the way, you can see an oddly colored green point here. This is because we have no data for this data point. So it's probably best to go into the properties and set this to a more neutral color. What's happening is the color palette is bleeding through and it's grabbing the next color available in the palette. So that's the idea behind the heat map chart. Simple color distribution that help you see patterns. Let's look at some other examples. We know that the coronavirus has been on the news a lot lately, so I went and found some data to look at this. Might be an interesting thing to plot. So if we look at the infection rate daily across various values in various countries, we can see what the spread looks like. Here's the result, and to me it's a pretty interesting visualization. Just like before, you read this top down, so you can see each of the values and as it spreads daily. But you also might notice something weird. Notice this value of 549 cases on January 22nd, and then nothing for China. But then if you go to mainland China, the cases start a day after. It's actually a problem with the source data here. Clearly somebody started writing China and then started entering the rest of the data as mainland China. That's why this is happening. Actually a very common data issue. Now there is a really neat way to fix this. If you go into view mode, right click on the data point in question where you see the option called group members. Here we can create a new series, which I'll just call China by grouping both mainland China and China together. Pretty cool, huh? Now I've got one more heat chart example to show you. Here's an example where instead of focusing on date flowing from top to bottom, let's do something a little bit different. In this case, I'm doing a visualization to show the sales funnel. In sales, these are the steps required to go from prospecting to closing the deal. In this visualization, I've plotted the salespeople on the left, and in this case, the funnel flows from left to right rather than top to bottom like I showed you in the other ones, just flipping it for variety. Also, you notice we added an arrow here for a little bit more clarity so that people can understand that they are looking at it from a lead as it works its way to the right to show that close. This visual allows you to ask a lot of neat questions of the data pretty easily. For example, one thing you might say is, how is our funnel doing in general? And to look at this, you just look at general color. The more dark colors on this heat map, the healthier your funnel. You could ask how individual salespeople are looking. So by looking in a single line, we can see that Britannia here is absolutely killing it. Now, how are people's funnels comparing? Again, same idea. Look at several lines side by side. Or how does the middle of our funnel look? Again, the darker, the better. So it's just really good for quick recognition of information. Also, if you're doing this sort of visualization with color and density, do take a moment to take a look at our color range option in the legend. This is a neat way to help users better understand what these color values mean. 
And without it, it's just color intensity rather than actual numeric values. So that's it. I hope this gives you a feeling of what a heat map chart might do and obviously give you some potential examples. There's certainly a lot of potential with this visualization. And if you're interested in learning more about cool visualizations that have to do with patterns, take a look at the video that we did on cycle plots. It's called How a Cycle Plot Can Change Your Life. This is a fantastic visualization and it can help you see cyclical patterns in your data very clearly. See you next time, and thanks for watching.